The, our next speaker is a marketing communications and innovation executive who's also a leader in fostering self-esteem in the community and at work. She founded WSDM, pronounced Wisdom, this, a salon series, and is also currently the chief futurist at Faith Popcorn's Brain Reserve. Here to give us insights on ingenuity for the good of humanity, please join me in welcoming Kim Bates to the screen. Kim, to you. Thank you. Okay, are we able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Hello everyone. I, I just want to thank the Converge Tech team for all the hard work that you've put into this amazing initiative um, that's happening this week. Um, I know that you've worked really hard and I wanna thank you for inviting me today. Um, I'm a huge fan of Rashad and I really thank him for his voice and all the wonderful work that he's doing in our communities. We actually um, worked on a project this year with the advertising industry. And we um, had interns from all over the world and we were working to figure out um, how color of change can communicate with universities better and change the university system. So I'm really respectful of all the work that they're doing and I volunteered my time to, to work with the interns. It was great. But today um, I'm going to talk about a glass half full future. While we're going through a really tough time right now, um, and good morning, good night, and good afternoon to everyone around the world, um, I want to focus on the fact that I truly believe the future is going to be bright. And I believe that we will move past this moment in history. And on the other side, there's going to be a lot of um, positive innovation and really smart thinking that's gonna help solve for the world's biggest problems, especially in education. So I'm gonna take everyone through um, some of that thinking today. So as a futurist, I've had to look at many different industries over the years, um, everything from agriculture, sustainability, wellness, women's issues, gaming, you name it. Um, but nothing as much as this year um, has affected culture in the way that it has. And I think we've all felt that. But what's coming out of that is just the COVID-19 has been a great accelerator of the future. So the future and all of the ideas that we've been thinking are, are happening right now. And that's what I wanna celebrate today with you all. So in terms of the pandemic, as we had a quarantine, one of the ideas that I'd like to bring forth for everyone to think about is we're each having our own quarantine. We're each having our own experience this year. So some people are seeing quarantine as, you know, shelter in place and being locked down. And others were looking at quarantine as being an artist in residence and started creating art and new things um, inside their homes. Some people were and still are very much in fear and in that state of self-protection and family protection. And others um, really started to think about the collective well-being and what they could do for others outside of their homes and their families. Economic collapse is very real, um, but at the same time as we stayed home, ecological renewal was happening. You know, Our air quality in certain cities that had been bad for years were good boredom and setback. Um, people see, saw it as a time of metamorphosis and growth. Um, lack of privacy and others saw it as more free time. So I don't want to um, downplay the negatives of what's happening in culture right now. But if we think of this as a glass half full, that there's gonna be realities in culture but there's gonna be really great opportunity for ingenuity and innovation. And there's a stat that I saw that 62.4% of Gen Zers around the world um, feel that this time has caused stress, frustration, anxiety, and loneliness. So there is real pain going on right now. And it's no surprise that the Calm app, which is using technology to help try to solve for this problem, has raised over $150 million this year and is now valued at $2.2 billion to help with 
anti-anxiety and all of those issues going on. So if we think about this year, this is just a sampling of some of the explosion of design and innovation that's been happening all around the world to help protect us and connect ourselves. So children in China in school crafted and invented these hats so they could stay six feet from each other. And someone even invented a gadget on the left over here um, that would help prevent us from touching our faces, which I find pretty funny. People are rethinking how we're gonna fly in the future and how we're gonna open doors. This is, there's so much innovation. There's so much design happening. So I had to put it on two pages, but how, how are we existing outside? Like, are, how are we thinking about picnics? And what is the de future design of automobiles? And how are we gonna keep um, our, our air around us clean and do safer testing? So I feel really positive about the fact that this moment in history has created such creativity and such innovation. Um, and I think that that's what this week is about, is how can you take all of your ingenuity and all of your creativity inside of you and give it back to the world. So if we think about students and graduates, you might ask, well, what happens next? What happens to us? You know, how do we get back out into the world and how do we maintain and, and become successful after all of this? And I think there are gonna be some new values um, that we should all embrace that are going to help us succeed in the future because not all of the bad is gonna go away right away, but there's gonna be so much good. And I think Rashad spoke really well about this. Resilience is going to be one of the key values, um, both in personal life, education, students, um, business, leaders in the community, leaders in business. Resilience is gonna be so important and agility. Um, having a sense of curiosity and wanting to solve for the biggest world's biggest problems. You know, the things that we thought were so important a year ago, they're just not that important anymore. So how can we be curious about the things that are important? Having a sense of empathy, knowing that the experience you're having right now is not necessarily the experience that someone else is having, having sitting right next to you. How can you take a walk in someone else's shoes and try to understand things from their point of view and help them? A sense of responsibility and courage courage to make change in the world, mental well-being and keeping yourself healthy in the mind is really important so that you can be better and stronger for those around you. Ingenuity, agility, <clears throat> we talked about, and humanity led and putting people in the center of things and humans. So this has also caused businesses to start rethinking their role in society, which is a good thing. Home goods, you're, you're in the home goods industry, you become the comfort and protection goods industry, right? Because we're nesting and cocooning in our homes now and we're wanting to make it more comfortable and beautiful and have a sense of peace when we're at home if we're gonna spend so much time there. And food service companies and restaurants have become the universal food care and delivery systems. And think about all of the um, companies that have um, donated food to frontline workers and food banks and, and how do we serve and go out into the community and help feed people who can't feed themselves right now. Alcohol, entertainment, fitness has become mood management, right? So we're working out to feel better, not just to feel healthier. Some people are imbibing um, in wine. Um, home improvement is you know, human improvement so that we can flourish inside our homes. And medical industry has become universal health. And still we struggle with having access to good health care. Um, but the doctors and the scientists have been elevated within culture and society to become our trusted advisors. They're gaining way more respect than they've ever had in the past. Um, and they're even streaming their thoughts. They're becoming the new influencers. The whole influencer economy is being rethought um, and tested. And who are the true influencers in society moving forward? And in terms of, I'll go quicker here, um, just if you own a parking lot, you own some of the most valuable real estate in the world because they have become the outdoor churches, the outdoor concert halls, the outdoor movie theaters, 
and the sports arenas um, right now. They're safer spaces. And who would have thought a parking lot could become that a year ago? And in terms of education, and this is what I'm gonna focus on today and what you're gonna focus on this week is it's becoming Learn Anywhere and equal access platforms. And I'm gonna talk more about that. So there's three cultural aftershocks of the, as we move past this pandemic, they're gonna stick around that are very positive because they're driving ingenuity within culture, education, and humanity. The first one is called growth hacking. And that is really about having greater access to upskilling and self-improvement right now. The second one is called essential community, meaning our communities have become more essential than ever. And we're creating new ways of giving and connecting. And the metaverse, the metaverse has grown exponentially in the past nine months. And we have all new worlds to escape in, to create and even work within. So the first one, we're inventing solutions to better ourselves through subsidized education, how-to sharing and mentorship opportunities. And when we do futuring and when we think about what's gonna happen next, we look at cultural signals that are popping up. And those signals, if you look at them over time, but also as a group, you can start to recognize patterns within culture and really start to feel where things are gonna shift. So some of the emerging signals of ingenuity that we're seeing in the space of growth hacking, um, guild education, so companies like Walmart, Lowe's, Taco Bell, and Chipotle, if you go to work for one of these companies, they're offering their frontline workers and their associates access to free upskilling and college degrees online on their time for a dollar a day. I think that's wonderful of these companies to offer their employees something like this. Um, a cloud guru is an on-demand cloud certification. So you can become skilled cloud talent on your time online. And this is not in completely inaccessible. Um, they, they, they have hands-on virtual labs and personal instructors, and it costs $34 a month. It might be out of reach for some, but it's a lot cheaper than um, a full college education, that's for sure. The great courses, 13,000 on-demand video streaming lectures right now are being taught by award-winning professors and experts that you can access. Upkey, virtual internships. Upkey gives 40,000 students a winning resume. They help you build your professional brand and they connect you with top companies that are offering internships um, and jobs, which is just a wonderful organization. I could be virtual mentoring. I could be provides high school students online mentoring. Some of this is free. This empowers teens to plan the future of their careers. So, in thinking about this, this is nice to see the signals, but what is the implication for education moving in the future? And so here's some seeds of thought that I wanna leave with you all today. Education could very well become way more affordable in the future. I mean, if you look at those signals, that's what we're seeing and or free. And the idea that you need a live in-person college education, not saying that you don't need a college education, but what I'm saying is, to be in a classroom all the time on a campus just to have a successful career in the future is gonna to continue to be challenged. So I wanna give everyone some idea sparks for over the next year as you are inventing and, and thinking about all the exponential technology out there that can help empower positive change in the educational space to make it more affordable, to make it more equal. Um, I'm, I put down a few ideas just to spark your brains, just to spark your minds, to think about potential solutions. So what about building virtual internships and mentorship platform at the same time, because I feel that students need both. And the power of AR is just amazing when you're job shadowing, or you're trying to upskill because you can follow superiors around a plant, um, a factory, or the office, and you can have digitally provided information overlaid through AR technology that just makes your learning experience so much richer. The second area um, that um, I spoke about was essential community. 
So our communities are even more important to our health and well-being than we ever imagined. And we must enable ourselves and our family and our friends into helping them thrive. So here are some emerging ingenuity signals within the community that um, of people giving back and organizations really helping during this time that will continue in the future. There is an organization called Sustain that is offering global virtual um, sexual education and sexual wellness and, and menstrual health education to youth communities that really lack those resources or access in their schools. Talkspace has started global teen counseling. So it's not just therapy for adults, but they're donating free counseling uh, with volunteer therapists for teens, which is so, so important right now. Um, there are teens just in the US that are trying to help solve for period poverty. You might not have thought about this, but one out of three women when people who menstruate are suffering right now and struggling financially to purchase feminine hygiene products during the pandemic. When I saw that stat, I was it blew me away. And so teens are creating friend groups across America and they're helping to donate their menstrual hygiene products to women in local shelters and pantries. National assignment calls for students and seasoned professionals. So if you have a magical superpower, you can help give that superpower back to the community. Um, and you can donate your skills and your talent to support small and local businesses through this organization. And Google Wi-Fi and Chromebooks. Google set up 100,000 free Wi-Fi access points and donated Chromebooks to, to underserved students um, in California and other areas around the world. So those are some of the community signals that we're seeing. And what does this mean for education? This means that we're gonna have greater global access to mental wellness and menstrual health education and support in the future. Again, so needed and very important. And how could we help amplify that? Let's think through that. Governments and companies must solve for Wi-Fi deserts. So every child has digital equality. And that is one of our biggest challenges that we face around the world. So could we create in the next year free community tutoring trucks, right? Volunteer teachers and tutors go out into the underserved communities, into communities that don't necessarily have access to give students free and accessible extra education and help, snacks included. Um, school district and city council sponsored broadband. Could we look to our local governments um, and, and, and really look to them to help solve not just the technology companies, but our local communities to help solve for this internet issue um, and help sponsor broadband distance learning for all. And the final area is called metaverse. And really our virtual twins are becoming our enablers of entertainment, invention and entrepreneurialism. I find this area really exciting and I hope you do too. So here's some emerging signals. So during the pandemic, Travis Scott held with his virtual Travis Scott twin, a concert on Fortnite. 27.7 million attendees paid to see him and, is, and he hit the number one spot on Billboard. That within a video game. So <clears throat> that was monumental and it broke records. And it showed that we can live our lives and do the things that we thought we had to go out and do in these new virtual metaverse worlds. The sandbox is a decentralized virtual world that's built on blockchain and cryptocurrency, and it allows creators to build and own and monetize their own games, kind of like Roblox does. Um, and you can create virtual theme parks. So um, this is a platform that allows you to create your own business online. And then Lil Michaela and virtual, um, virtual avatars and virtual influencers. Lil Michaela has 2.7 million followers on Instagram, but she is a virtual person and she is now a celebrity and she makes real money. And her makers, Trevor and Sarah, they earn real money in sponsorships. She gets paid to, for virtual appearances and brand collaborations. So how can you rethink human in the future um, an influencer and uh, even teacher? Roblox is um, a robust business 
it um, enabled creators on this platform to make $110 million in 2019, and it's even bigger this year. So what does this mean? So the metaverse will open up all new possibilities to what immersive education learning virtual instructors could look and feel like in the future. I think I just mentioned that. And you can work in gaming or the virtual commerce economy while you go to school or already have a job when you graduate. It's very exciting. It opens up a platform for everyone to participate. Virtual avatar teachers, um, computer generated can learn to teach lesson plans. I'm not saying that teachers aren't important for all of you educators out there, you're never going away, um, but this is an opportunity to expand your capabilities. And the dream band, it's brainwave bending band that fills our subconscious while we put it on with our most pleasant memories. But it could also in the future start to help give us new skills and education and even put it on while we sleep so we learn. So think about again, how can you leverage the power of technology for good, not for bad, um, to help solve some of these problems? And this is one final thought. Now, this isn't going to affect your generation, but think about your children's generation or the next generation. People always ask, well, what's going to happen in the way future with education? In 2035, um, 15 years from now, where will we be? And real-time education. So this, this really is game-changing. Um, Real-time education means that as we become merge with machines and technology in the future, so as man and machine come together, it'll make us more superhuman and anyone will be able to upload all the knowledge, skills, and education they need in any given moment directly to their brain chips. So our future will be powerful and equal and bright. Thank you. Questions? Yes, thanks for that, Kim. That was fantastic. Um, we do have some questions. Uh, the first question here is that culture is developed for many years, decades, or lifetimes. Do you think that the shift in culture is seen will be long lasting? In terms of the pandemic culture? Uh, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm reading the question, so I don't have the <laughs> what's behind it, but I think that's what's yeah. going yeah, like I think that there's going to be certain enduring values, um, enduring pieces of culture, because there's, I don't like to say the new normal, I think it's the new strange. It's the fact that we've learned to live without some things during this time, right? We've had to kind of slim down our own lives, our own priorities, and then we've learned that, oh, well, you know, we don't always have to be in an office with people every day to, to work with them. We don't always have to be in a classroom every day to be educated. So I think there are certain cultural tremors that are happening right now that are gonna change um, the world forever. Okay, we, we have another question that just popped in and I think this is, it's quite provocative uh, relating to the last point you made, uh, the question that questioner asked, is this really a good idea because technology can negatively affect our health because of radio energy. So imagine having that coming in every day. Yeah, I think that um, the people like Elon Musk, um, Neuralink is one of the technologies that is being created to actually um, give us this in the future. And I think the scientists and technologists are aware of, of these things and we'll have to solve for that before we can get to that state. Okay, so there's a, a hurdle we have to cross then. Correct. And uh, another one, this future that you're describing, will it be open source? And if so, how does e-commerce and open source fit together? So um, yes, it, it, it will potentially be open source. There'll be different ecosystems. Think about the Google ecosystem versus the Apple ecosystem, right? One is more open than the other. So imagine that you might live in a Google home in the future and you might live in an Apple home in the future, depending on what ecosystem you want to live with. And within those ecosystems, or even just as we man and machine come together, there's gonna be ways in which um, all of our 
um, surfaces within our home become shoppable, or we're going to be able to shop with our minds. Like if we think that we need something, we can order it. We will have brain ordering in the future, and we will be able to control machines with our minds in the future. Okay. Well, that leads into what I, I think will be our last question. I want to be respectful of your time and everybody else's time. And there are a lot of questions coming. So, and so clearly your talk has really sparked people's interest. Uh, will people with disabilities have more opportunities in this new digital world? Absolutely. Because like I said, I do believe if for some reason you have physical, let's start with physical disabilities, you're going to have more access to work, to education. You don't necessarily have to leave your home, right, to make a living in the future. Um, if you have visual or audio right, disabilities, um, and you're challenged in those areas. New technologies are being created right now so that you'll have audio chips. Um, people who have lost their sight and, and, and truly lost their hearing, I believe very strongly will be able to see and hear in the future. Even the um, people working with CRISPR have for the first time ingest, injected, sorry, um, the CRISPR gene in someone's eye and given them their eyesight back. Wow. And that's happening right now. So 10 years from now, I think some of these problems are gonna go away. Exoskeletons are going to be um, mm -hmm. given to us so that we have become superhuman powers. So if you can't move today in ways that you wouldn't, that you, you know, that you're challenged by, you'll be able to put on your exoskeleton and walk and move around and it'll give you powers that you've never imagined. Wow. This is, a, this is an exciting future that you see. And, and thank you for taking the time to, to share your thoughts and your visions with us.